Hello, students. I hope all of you are okay. So today we are going to discuss about voice chains. You know, there are two kinds of voices. There are active voice and passive voice. So today we are going to learn about some rules and regulations that we have to follow to make the sentence or change the sentence from active to passive format. First of all, as you can see in the screen, that uh, active and passive voice is represented through a diagram. The diagram shows us that voice are of two kinds, the active sentence and passive sentence. Uh, active sentence, what is active sentence? Active sentence is where, what subject does. That means the what is done by the subject is represented directly out here is called an active sentence and where passive if we go for passive then we could say that uh, the focus is on the action that means the action is the main purpose out here here the subject won't be the main participle out here only the action that means the verb will act directly out here that is what passive sentence is for example you can see that in active form Ram killed Ravan. That means the subject Ram killed Ravan. That Ram did a thing and the action is represented out here. But the what is the passive form of the sentence? The passive form of the sentence is Ravan was killed by Ram. So here we can see that the killing part, that means the action part has the more emphasized out here. So that's the difference between active and passive sentence. How to change from active to passive? Let's look at some statement that the Ram killed Ravan. Here, Ram is the subject, killed is the verb, and Ravan is the object. Whereas in the passive form, Ravan, that's the object which has came into the place of subject. Was is an auxiliary verb. We can also say that it's a be verb. Then we have the killed, that is the past participle form of the verb kill. And we have a preposition just by and ram. That's the subject which has come to the point of object. So active to passive. If you want to change it, if you want to transform the sentence from active to passive, you have to make these changes. You can also see for uh, some examples out here that that shows us that the change the differences between active and passive. She helps me. He is helped by her. She helps him. She is helped by her. I'm buying a pen. A pen is being bought by me. He has to teach us. We have to be taught by him. Someone is following us. We are being followed by someone. Here, someone is written out here. We can also make the passive sentence without describing the object at the last. If the object goes for any common sources. So here, what can we see that uh, the uh, structure of the sentence of an active sentence is a subject plus verb plus object. Whereas the structure of a passive sentence is object plus be verb plus verb, past participle form of the verb plus by plus subject. So the very common rule, very essential and common rule of changing, uh, changing the sentence comes out here that uh, first of all being the object first you have to being the object first the object must be placed in front of the subject the object, object must be placed in front of the subject then uh, choose the correct v verb that means the choosing the v verb is very important out here because the v verb changes according to the tense and the structure it also it is also very much affected by the subject. So while choosing the be verb, you should follow the tense of the sentence and also you have to follow 
the subject, the number and person of the subject. Change the verb into participle. That means the main verb, the main verb that you have in the active form must be changed in the past participle form. And you have to add by before the subject. Or in some other cases, we will see in the letter that uh, you, you should also use some other prepositions in case instead of by. For example, you can see in the sentence that she helps him. It is transformed in such a way that it comes to be us that he is helped by her. Now look how subject and object may change. Here you can see that the subject from and of the object from of some pronouns. I go transforms into me. We transforms into us. You goes to you. They to them. He, him, she, ha, ram, ram, go, go. So as you can see, the, if the noun is described out here, there is no change out here. But wherever, whenever you have the people, uh, pronoun, you have to make some certain changes. If there are two objects, what will you do? You will use on any one of them. She told us a story. What happens out here that we here we have two objects that us and a story. So if you have such sentences where you have two, uh, two certain objects, you can use one of them. But remember that it will be easier for you if you use an object that represents a person. That will be easier. For example, out here, you can see that she told us a story. Here we have two objects, us and a story. So us, of course, it represents person. A story is signifying some story. So we were told a story by her. We can we are where we are using us as our target object. What we're going to transform in the subject position. Now, if we take a story in in place of that, if we take a story in place of that, we can we have to use a story in front of that. A story was told to us by her. In this case, you can see that we have to use an extra to to make our sentence meaningful. Of course, whatever you do, however you do, you should always try to make the sentence a meaningful one. They appointed him an ambassador. They appointed him an ambassador. Here, we also have two objects. Then we can transform it in both ways. First of all, we can say that he was appointed an ambassador. An ambassador was appointed to him. The story has taught us a good lesson. You can also say instead of that, that we have been taught a good lesson by the story. Also, you can say that a good lesson has been taught to us by the story. Any of them will do. Okay, we are going to the next one. So what happens that when you have these verbs, has, have, had, in, im, uh, was, were, to, plus present verb, or verb, present form. She has to help us. How are we going to change it? We're going to change it like this. The object comes to the subject position. The object is us. We can bring it to the position of the subject that we have to be we have to be helped by her so it doesn't matter what happens out here but you have to follow the certain four rules that you have to change the place of the subject and object you have to add an auxiliary verb and you have to make the past participle form of the main verb then you have to add a preposition we have to learn english the english has to be learned by us by us you can say it or you can't say you don't if you don't want you don't you can leave it alone i had to wait the bus i had to wait for the bus uh the bus had to be waited by me i'm sorry for the mis uh out here mispronunciation out here the b is missing out here 
you can already see. So we're going to the next one. Model of the verbs. Can, could, shall, should, may, might, will, would, must. These are the model auxiliary verbs. So what is the difference between other verbs and model auxiliary verbs? The difference is that whenever we have model auxiliary verbs in place of, of uh, in front of any, in front of any main verbs, the main verbs remains unchanged. It doesn't have any kind of changing from that. So she can speak Chinese. Here you can see the main verb is speak, but we are using uh, what we are using. We are using a she uh, can a model verb in front of the main verb. So how can we change it? We can change it in this way. The Chinese the object comes to the place of the subject. Chinese can be the model verb remains in the position uh, in the second position of the sentence. It will or it will not change. Uh, then we have a be that we have to bring to change the sentence from active to passive. Then we have the past participle of the verb. Then we go for by and her. The Chinese can be spoke, spoken by her. We must preserve the tigers. Tigers must be preserved by us. Or we can also say that tigers must be preserved. In case, if you have these things in your sentence, must have, should have, would have, might have, would have. In this section, if, if you have any kind of these pages, then after these uh, verbs, your main verb will be transformed into past participle term. So if you have these things, then you have to add been before the verb. No matter what will happen, that the main verb must be changed into Past participle form. He should have stolen my pen. My pen should have been stolen by him. They must have left any sign. Any sign must have been left by them. No need to add by plus serve uh, if the subject is. That means, I think from last few slides, you already have this question that uh, why. Uh, in some places of the of passive sentence, we are uh, ignoring the object. So that is the answer right here. That no need to add by or serve if the subject is we, they, someone, somebody, none, nobody, everybody, pupil, etc. If these things comes into the subject and goes into the object where you while you are making it passive, then you don't need to mention them. Okay, there, we, they, someone, somebody, none, nobody, everybody, people. Okay, uh, for example, you can see that they have stolen my pen. My pen has been stolen. They must have left any sign. Any sign must have been left. Negative sentences remain negative. You have to remember that when you are changing the sentence from active to passive, you are just changing the sentence pattern, not the sense of the sentence, not the meaning of the sentence must not be changed. So that is what happened out here. The negative sentence remains negative. You won't change the formation of the sentence. You, only, you will only change it from active to passive. They have not so stolen my pen. My pen has not been is stolen. They must not have left any sign. Any sign must not have been left. Nobody has done homework. Homework has not been done. Now look at the table. Simple present tense. Active. If, if the sentence is an active simple present tense, it transforms into object plus is, am, or are plus verb in past participle form. In case of continuous tense, you have is, am, and are as auxiliary verb, and you have to add ing with your verb. Where in the passive, you have to add being before the main verb. And of course, in any kind of tense, you must change the main verb into past participle form. 
present perfect tense, you can see out here, and present perfect tense, uh, you can also see that has have been this kind of tense. Okay. Now we are going to the past form. In past form, simple past form, simple past, in case of simple past, the passive sentence will be structured like this, that object plus was or where plus past participle form of the verb. In past continuous form, uh, there will be was and where as auxiliary verb. And in passive form, there will be was, where, plus being, plus part, past participle form of the verb. In case of past perfect tense, there will be and had plus been before the verb. Uh, past perfect actually not used commonly in changing the sentence of passive tense, active passive. Now we are coming to future tense. In case of simple future tense, we have to use shall or will plus be plus verb past participle form of the verb. For future continuous tense, we have to use be verb plus verb plus ing form. And also, what happens in the passive form that we have to add and have plus been plus past participle form of the verb. And future perfect continuous isn't quite used in the grammar. So now we are going to look at some more examples. She will write poems beautifully. So poems will be beautifully written by her. So what I was there that uh, the poems will be as we have taken the poem in the subject form, uh, the adverb beautifully is uh, has gone upwards. So you have to remember that when you write any sentences, you can have more than uh, many more sentences or clauses or phrases uh, to signify the sentence, to make the sentence more meaningful. So when you are doing it from active to passive, when you are transforming it from active to passive, you must remember that you have to arrange this as a sentence so that it can pronounce in a very nice mode. He handled the load carefully. The load was carefully handled by him. Passive yes, no question. In case of yes, no question, uh, can you speak English? Can English be spoken by you? Has he helped them? Have they been helped by him? Uh, in the last part, you can say, did you help him? Was he helped by you? Do the subject, do or does, that will be added in the first, then you go for subject, then the verb and object. So here you have to remember that uh, for you can see, you can clearly see out here that I have already seen, said that the main verb will be transformed into past participle form. But here you are seeing that the main verb is in the present form. Why is so? Because we have used uh, did. We have used do verb in, in the sentence to make it a question sentence. That's why the transformation of the verb, the transformation of the things have gone through do verb. That's why we are not changing the verb into past participle form. Some more examples, as you can see, that are they planting trees? Are trees being planted? Did they tell anything? Was anything told? My dear students, I hope that uh, you will take screenshots of these sentences and practice this and make more sentences like this. In case of WS questions, are they planting trees? Are trees being planted? Similar to yes, no. These are quite similar to yes, no. The, did they tell you? Were you told? The who questions are changed in two ways. If there is who, we can change it in two ways. Who opened the door? Who was the door opened by? By whom was the door opened? You can go in both ways. Passive of who question, there are more some examples. You can take a screenshot of these and save it in your PC or laptop for future use. I'm just going through the structure. The structure says that who plus be verb plus object plus v3 plus by. And of course, as these are interrogative sentences, you must add interrogation mark at the last of the sentence. And passive in imperative from open the door, uh, let him open the door. 
uh, let the door be open. In this kind of this formation, you have to remember that you have to have, you have to add plate in the first. Then you have to give the object. Then you have the be verb plus past participle form of the verb plus by plus subject. Some more examples out here. You can take examples uh, as screenshots and save them for future use. So that's all for today. Thank you for your patience and thank you for staying with me for such long time. And now, now I am going to my work. So have a nice day. Thank you all.